spiritual gifts. So let us take, let us take 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Please open your Bible and open that page, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I already said yesterday or today morning, chapter 12, 13, 14. These are the three chapters dedicated for the spiritual gifts. Now, can you read the first sentence, word number one? Ale Susamen. Everybody together, please read. Now, in regard to spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be unaware. In your own Bible you read, in your language or your uh, translation. Yeah. So, this is a very important point. Regarding spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be unaware. So that means the Lord or St. Paul says, I want you to be aware about the spiritual gifts. Now all those fathers, have you studied this in the seminary, this chapter? <laughs> eh? St. Paul says, so we are, we are called for evangelization. You are trained for evangelization, even as sisters. But this chapter, I don't know. So this is a very important chapter. St. Paul says, I do not want you to be unaware. But then our situation is, uh, many people do not know about such a chapter. What is that spiritual gifts? So, the first answer is, let us take it positively. St. Paul says, my dear brothers, I want you to be aware about the spiritual gifts. Now, how do we take that sentence? What type of awareness we need? So there are particularly two. First of all, what particular gift each one of us have? That is the first awareness. Ah, now John Paul II. <laughs> John Paul II. Pope John Paul II's a beautiful apostolic letter, Christi Fidelis Leici, that is about the lay people. In the preamble itself, he quoted a passage from here, that, that is word seven, word seven. Word seven says, to each individual, the manifestation of the spirit is given for common good or some benefit. Everybody read it. Now when I say everybody read it better, you read. Otherwise you will feel sleepy and you will sleep. Because this is not a very attractive subject. Oh, these spiritual gifts, these are not for me. These are for some big, big holy people. That is generally an understanding. But maybe by this time you might have noticed these little girls here, I say little girls, it works more in these little girls <laughs> than the priest or senior sisters. That is how the charisms works. Because of their simplicity, their innocence, it works very fast. Now we are going to have after this a workshop on again a spiritual gifts. You will find 
these front liners will have more victory than back liners <laughs> that is how i like such a combination you know such a combination this combination is the body of christ the body of christ has different members so in the end of this chapter it says verse 27 now you are christ's body and individually parts of it some people god has designated in the church to be first apostles so we have bishop here so his his gift is an apostle's gift so that is i cannot choose it is a special gift to be an apostle so in the body of christ there is somebody as an apostle and second prophets ah that i can all of us can be prophets third teachers teachers yes we can be teachers but only thing we should teach what the church teaching <laughs> hallelujah teachers then mighty deeds that is doing miracles that is po possible then gifts of healing yes assistance administration and variety of tongues variety of gift of tongues speaking in tongues singing in tongues prophecy in tongues interpretation of tongues variety of tongues are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers do all work mighty deeds do all have the gift of healing do all speak in tongues do all interpret strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gift so here referring to john paul II again word seven he says to each to each he took that word in inverted commas in the preamble to each that means to everyone there is a spiritual gift given to each and i tell you for me this was a great discovery i am born and brought up in a very good catholic family we were 10 children my parents took us every day to the church we had a very good family prayer everything but i never was told by my parents that you have a gift of evangelization you have a call to evangelize you have gifts they do not know they thought evangelization is the work of the priest and religious only at the age of 35 to 40 when the holy spirit himself opened these gifts i began to speak in tongues prophesy in tongues interpret the tongues gift of healing gift of preaching all these things started manifesting in me then only i realized yes all this each person has each person everyone has So we should have such a horizon. We should not go, oh, no, 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 this is for me. You don't have this. This is only for selected person. No, 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 no. So first openness, first awareness we need to have. Everyone has these gifts. Everyone. But we have terribly failed to recognize our charisms. That is why this type of seminars are required. First of all, to recognize what are the specific charisms each person has. 
secondly that charism how to use prudently i do not want you to be unaware see these are not toys they are tools so a charism is a very precious very precious gift of the holy spirit so we must know how to use it in a matured way a matured way so there are lot of wrong way it is used therefore we have so many difficulties because so many people use the charism without proper awareness that's why saint paul say i do not want you to be unaware so two aspects first is what is your specific charism that should be now today or these days you have to recognize what is your specific charism secondly in that charism whether you already growing what more informations what way you have to grow in that charism i tell you then our life will be very easy <laughs> very easy now i have a charism of teaching and preaching you call me anywhere any time thomas paul come and give a talk i said yes i am coming right now and as soon as i reach there i ask what is the subject what is the subject you want me to speak you only have to tell me this is the subject then it comes i don't need any preparation at all it is because the holy spirit has trained me with a lot of information from the teaching of the church and the teaching of the fathers teaching of the personal experience so all these things make myself very flexible very much sometimes in the divine retreat center yeah father uh, in our divine retreat center in coach uh, kerala nowadays i am most of the time out of town so earlier time when i was in kerala suddenly i get a telephone call uh the secretary of father panikel uh, father panikel want to talk to you as yes, yes, yes. give me the phone as yes. father panikel say thomas paul can you come immediately there is somebody who has to come for the talk he could not come can you come yes right now and only after reaching there i am asking what what subject i should speak inner healing okay ready inner healing how many hours three hours okay three hours so what i want to say it is because that is my personal charism it is my charism so i have no difficulty it is a god given charism so when you recognize what is your particular charism but at the same time god also can promote promote he can give promotion <laughs> now i have so many charisms i am writing script for the films i am writing articles for magazines i am writing so many charisms i have because the last word says strive strive eagerly for greatest spiritual gift 31 1231 please read 31 strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gift have you ever tried this so this is also my prayer oh lord give me give me give me more powerful charism so that i can build up the kingdom what for the charisms for the kingdom for building up the kingdom strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts 
so and then <laughs> then again said paul said paul is playing with this but i shall show you still more excellent way then he speak about the love now come to the beginning of this chapter here there is a very interesting aspect in the first paragraph word 4 please read word 4 chapter 12 word 4 5 and 6 word 4 5 and 6 please read it it's very interesting so here a very beautiful explanation of st paul this you have to understand there are different kinds of spiritual gift but the same spirit that is relating to the holy spirit different kinds but the same spirit now the next is there are different forms of service but the same lord that is jesus who said i have come not to be served but to serve so we have to understand it is a free service it is a service serve means who is the link to the serve jesus is the one who has said i have come to serve so we are the branch of that serving jesus and it is the work of the holy spirit so different gifts but the same spirit different service but the same lord and the third is to the father to god the father there are different working but the same yeah, no no is it same god different working the same god so here you can see a trinitarian connection see sometimes we feel oh that person is always talking about inner healing that person is always talking about deliverance 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 that person is always so the, because and we feel not good but that should not be we must respect everyone god has given a gift somebody has a gift of deliverance somebody has a gift of inner healing somebody has a gift of writing poetry somebody has a gift of article somebody has a gift of miracle working but the same spirit so in order to have the flexibility the holy spirit to activate our charisms we should understand everyone is lovingly related to holy spirit in a different way we should never criticize anybody never criticize that is very important for a fluidity for the good working of the holy spirit the good working of the holy spirit i remember in some of this type of seminar and workshop one lady said brother i used to have very good vision but now i don't have i used to see like a color television but now i am not seeing can you pray and find out what is the reason yeah all this thing i can do <laughs> so i prayed for her then the lord said she always criticizes so and so people so god do not take away the gifts but the holy spirit becomes sad holy spirit become sad so that is in another place it is written do not quench the spirit 
maybe Ephesians 4.30 I think please see Ephesians 4 yeah Ephesians 4.30 says do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you are sealed for the day of freedom. Do not grieve. And in another place, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 5, maybe 20, let's see, 520, First Thessalonians chapter 520. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Word 19, 19. Do not quench the spirit. Do not quench the spirit. So these are the two things. If we do that, the Holy Spirit become sad and we quench the spirit. And then the charism do not work properly. So then we have to repent. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry. Forgive me. I was criticizing that person. In fact, that person has been given by the Holy Spirit a specific task, a very good charism for the building of the kingdom of God. So when we criticize that person, we are criticizing Holy Spirit who is working in us. <laughs> That's the problem. So the Holy Spirit in us, oh, oh why do you say like that? Holy Spirit becomes sad. So this is a very, this is why St. Paul said, I do not want you to be unaware. All these things we must aware. I tell you an experience now. <laughs> Many years back, I was giving a retreat for the priest in one of the northeast dioceses. So bishop and all the priests. All the priests of the diocese was there. Five days retreat. I am alone. There was no team members like this because it was very northeast, so it was very difficult to. So, at one point, I said one word criticizing the priest, criticizing the priest. Judging them. Suddenly, I become dumb. I am not able to speak anymore. All my anointing frozen. Then I realized I made a mistake. And I asked the Lord, I am sorry. And the Lord told me, why did you say that? I have brought here, I have brought you here to help them. Not to criticize them. Yes, Lord, I am so sorry. One word, only one word in five days, I might have said thousands, lakhs of words. In that one word, I made a mistake. My anointing frozen. I am not able to continue. So I knelt down and I asked pardon to the whole Congregation, all the priests and bishop, I am sorry, I should not have said that. Forgive me. Please forgive me. Now you must visualize the scene. Now all the priests have to forgive me. And it happened. All the priests has forgiven me, including the bishop. And then the anointing <laughs> came such powerful way. See, the Lord always has a humorous way also in between. So now, after that, during lunch time, I was sitting with the bishop and vicar general and another two senior priests for lunch. And so one of the priests was telling, Thomas Paul, if this is the situation, how much every day we are criticizing one another, what will be our situation? <laughs> Ex 
exactly we should not ever criticize a bishop or a priest that is very much one day i had this in one day it was in germany it, that day the scripture was very nice uh, very good gospel was read so i was expecting this priest will now give a very good homily because he has a very good scripture passage but as soon as the reading is over he just closed the book and he continued the mass i said what is this you should give a homily i did not say but in my in my heart i thought why are you not giving a homily but suddenly i felt pain in my heart i said what is this pain the lord says who are you to criticize my priest and particularly when he is celebrating the holy sacrament oh my goodness so what is happening when he is celebrating he is christ offering the same sacrifice i tell you these are the ways our anointing become very dry very dry so i am very careful i am very careful through this experience and another it was in it was in i think ranji the diocese of ranji all priest and religious i think two batches we were having retreat some final anointing prayer so all are waiting for the anointing so eh? and then the priest has come to expose the blessed sacrament so there were girls singers so one girl was not in a good mood i told her come on go and sing the song no i don't want to sing she said i said why go no then i was so angry with her i was very angry with her okay then you don't sing come on sit go something like that i said <laughs> and now i am here with the eucharistic lord oh lord give anointing no anointing is coming <laughs> about more than 100 fathers and 200 sisters anointing prayer the priest open the eucharist i mean expose the eucharist he is kneeling down in front and incensing and behind i am like i am like frozen completely frozen no anointing i said my lord what is what is what is this and the lord says you are the reason <laughs> you are angry oh i am sorry i am sorry i am sorry i am sorry you know what to do you must repent and you must do a confession what now confession all are waiting for the anointing and now i should confess yes oh my god now how do i do that help me holy spirit yes i will help you holy spirit said you tell the music group to sing another song go in front to the priest who is kneeling down there and incensing tell him to come to the sacristy i need an urgent confession she will come then you go with him you ask pardon to that girl mrs girl and then you confess and come clear direction this is how holy spirit speak my own anger became such a <laughs> block for the anointing i am saying some of not good things of me to understand how sensitive is the holy spirit 
and how we have to be aware about the working of the spirit so by this time this girl also felt repentance that nothing is happening and she knew it is because of her so as soon as i went into the sacristy she also asked pardon i also asked pardon and we came in peace i and i said okay now you go and sing so she came back to the singing group now i knelt down for confession the priest took my confession and my only one sin i had to say was my anger and he forgave me he absolved me and confession was over then he also came i came and then came such an anointing now again the lord's humor humor the lord's humorous action is after the anointing prayer is over this priest came to me thomas paul i want to say something to you i said yes father he said thomas all these five days i was sitting here listening to but i had no feeling at all i had no experience at all but when i gave you the confession at that time i felt such an anointing <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> god's ways are mysterious god's ways are mysterious and i hugged him he hugged me okay so what i want to say is charisms are in every one of us but one of the reason it is not active first reason is we are not aware about our own charism that is very important second thing is this three principle all charisms are charisms the spiritual gifts are different kinds of spiritual gifts but the same spirit so the the spiritual gifts what i have somebody else have but it is the same holy spirit so when i criticize or when i don't respect the other person's charism the spirit is sad sad so that is very important we have to know we should never make any loose talk on this area this area never criticize a priest or a bishop or anybody in this area of charism or anointing never 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 and then it will the holy spirit will be quickly very quickly sad and that is what it's so sensitive so sensitive okay now we already said here to each individual manifestation of the spirit is given but seven now after seven eight to eleven saint paul talk about nine spiritual gifts now please read that nine spiritual gifts to one is given through the expression of knowledge or to one given the spirit the expression of wisdom to another the expression of knowledge and the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gift of healing by the same spirit to another mighty deeds to another prophecy to another discernment of spirits to another varieties of tongues to another interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit produces all of this distributing them individually to each person as he wish so first of all 
we must know the word each is two times said here each person has gifts and i have seen even those who are not yet baptized so many charisms are working in them that is also the working of the holy spirit okay now now this nine gifts we can tabulate into three three columns three particular department or three area so first is now you can write down in your notebook a b c a revelation gifts that is gifts which, which are revealed by holy spirit a revelation gifts that is the word of knowledge word of wisdom yeah after writing revelation gift a again 1 2 3 first is word of wisdom word of knowledge and discernment of spirits these are called revelation holy spirit is revealing holy spirit work with the supernatural power to reveal something beyond our human wisdom beyond our human knowledge so first is revelation gift a and in that 1 2 3 word of wisdom word of knowledge discernment of spirits now the second is power gifts power gifts that it works through the power of the holy spirit power of god that is gift of healing gift of miracles gift of faith so here the gift of faith is a charismatic gift of faith i will explain that later so the three now b is power gifts in that 1 2 3 <laughs> gift of healing gift of miracles and gift of faith power gifts now c that is the third part is word gifts word gifts that is gifts operated through the word mouth word gifts that is gift of prophecy word gifts gift of prophecy gift of tongues and gift of interpretation of the tongues gift of interpretation of the tongues so now you got all the three a b c first is please read loud or everybody first what is the first one a revelation gifts what and what are the revelation gifts word of knowledge word of wisdom word of knowledge and interpret and discernment of the spirits now b is power gifts three in that gift of healing gift of miracles gift of faith and third part is word gifts in word gifts comes gift of prophecy gift of tongues gift of interpretation of tongues praise the lord so you are happy now this is like a teaching correct now this revelation gift has very good use very good use so we must go to first corinthians chapter 1 chapter 1 or chapter 2 chapter 2 first corinthians chapter 2 chapter 2 9 and 10 chapter 2 9 and 10 says chapter 
9 and 10 says as it is written what i has not seen everybody louder i has not seen and the ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart what god has prepared for those who love him and verse 10 says this god has revealed through the spirit so there are so many <coughs> Now these gifts generally we use for counseling, counseling. But more than counseling, this gift is very good to know God's mysteries, to know the meaning of the scripture, to know the divine revelations. So that way we have to understand this. The gift of revelation is required for us to understand God, understand His plan, understand His teaching, understand His uh, mysteries. As an example, Jesus said, uh, among those who are born from women, no one is greater than John the Baptist. Okay? But the one who is in the kingdom of, the one who is least in the kingdom of God, this is Matthew 11, 11. Matthew 11, 11. Just simply right now, Matthew 11, 11, and we go ahead. Among those who are born from women, no one is greater than John the Baptist. That is, among all the prophets, John the Baptist is so great because he could see Jesus personally. All prophets prophesied about Jesus, but nobody could see Jesus. But John the Baptist could not only see Jesus, he baptized Jesus. So what a great man John the Baptist. But that is not the point. <laughs> the point here is the next word, Jesus says, but the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Who is that? Who is that? <laughs> yes, Father. Eh? We, we, correct? Yeah. We are. When I, first time, when I prayed about this, I use this gift of revelation. Oh Lord, reveal to me. Reveal to me whom, about whom are you speaking? Who is this? And I understood. It's an understanding. We are those. Then I wanted another little more explanation. Then the Lord explained to me, you are baptized by me, by my blood, by my water, and you eat the body of Christ and drink the blood of Christ. Did any of the Old Testament prophets, even John the Baptist, could have that privilege? Oh. Ah, you know, when I preach this to German, Germans, they are so excited that we are greater than John the Baptist. Then one German raised his hands. They immediately asked questions. They said, Thomas Paul, how you learn these things? <laughs> they want to know how you learn this. And that day, a priest who is 75 years old, retired priest, he every year attend my retreat. On that day he came up to give it to share. He said, 
I am 75 years old and all my life I worked as a very good priest, but I never understood this meaning of this scripture. Today I understood and as I heard this, I knelt down and I thank God, O oh Lord, how great I am. I am greater than John the Baptist because I am in the kingdom of God. I am so united with you. And he came to me and thanked me. So, so that is called gift of revelation. Gift of revelation. So I prayed always, O oh Lord, when I receive one word, when I read one word, I ask the Lord, what is the deeper meaning of that word? So I break the word, break the word. I make into pieces. <laughs> and then I ask the Holy Spirit, what is the meaning of this? Please reveal to me. Ah. He is very happy. Jesus is also very happy when we ask such questions. So, that is how, that is one gift of revelation, one way. This, everybody, when you reflect a word of God, don't simply read it. You read one sentence, you break it, and ask the Lord, what is the meaning? What is the deeper meaning? So the catechism says, there are four ways of interpretation of the scripture. Paragraph 115 to 18. 15 to 18. Yeah. This, the, yeah. The literal sense, the spiritual sense, the allegorical sense, the moral sense, the anagogical sense. Every scripture, according to the teaching of the church, must be interpreted in the four ways. First is literal, literally the word meaning. Second is, it has a spiritual sense. And in the spiritual sense, there are three parts. This is CCC 115 to 18. Allegorical sense. Allegorical sense means relating to Christ and his salvation plan. Then moral sense. With the morality, how we have to apply it in our moral and third, anagogical sense. Anagogical means leading, that is, leading to the heavenly Jerusalem, leading to the kingdom, eschatological. So every time when you read a word of God, we have to ask Holy Spirit, Oh, Holy Spirit, teach me. So Jesus said, when he comes, he will teach you everything about what I spoke. And he will make you to remember what I spoke. So, this is a very, very good gift to recognize the teaching. So, when you understand the mystics like John of the Cross or St. Therese of Lisieux, or St. Therese of Avila, or like the great saints, St. Augustine, all of them have this gift of revelation so great. Now another example I tell you, another example, very good example. Now take, take Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11. Please open Luke chapter 11. In Luke chapter 11, 
the disciples asked jesus lord teach us to pray and the lord has taught them the our father prayer the luke's version of our father prayer is a small prayer than matthew but after teaching the our father prayer according to luke then from word 5 onwards jesus is giving a parable a teaching about prayer now now you can read in your text suppose one of you have a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says friend lend me three loaves of bread very specific lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey at and i have nothing to offer him and he says in reply from within do not bother me the door has already been locked and my children and i are already in bed i cannot get up to give you anything now jesus is teaching i tell you if he does not get up to give him the loss because of their friendship he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence is a very great great teaching now first of all please see how many friends are here how many friends are here one friend came to his another friend in midnight and asking give me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine has come at midnight okay so three persons are here now we must know what is the meaning of this parable what is the meaning of this three loaves of bread very specifically give me three loaves of bread a friend has come to my home at midnight i have nothing to give him give me three loaves of bread and inside that person says no sorry i cannot give you anything i am already sleeping with my children and the door is closed and jesus says he may not he will not give because of his friendship but he will give because of the insistence persistence now this is where we have to ask holy spirit holy spirit through the gift of revelation reveal to me who is that friend came at the midnight what means he is in a journey what means that three loaves of bread what means that father who is sleeping with his children yeah now i tell you now here we have to take the assistance of the teaching of the fathers or mystics so saint augustine says he is the father church father he says the three laws represents the knowledge about the trinity knowledge about the trinity and saint john of the cross in his book ascent to mount carmel here in repeat the three laws means faith hope and charity the theological virtues the man who came at the midnight is people like us who are in the journey we are in the journey of pilgrimage but do not have the spiritual foot 
do not have the spiritual knowledge about god do not have the spiritual nourishment for our soul starving and the midnight is the situation of a soul who is completely blind without the divine condescence and who is this friend going to another friend that is jesus jesus who is interceding who is like a mediator asking for us he is not asking for him he said i have a friend who has come to my house i have nothing to give him give me give me give me now who is this who says i am with my children sleeping that is god the father <laughs> god the father and jesus is insisting give me give me give me till i receive and this is the prayer about our father when we pray our father hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done give us today our daily bread what is the daily bread the so first of all we need the daily bread the knowledge about god the theological virtues the word of god the bread all this is the daily bread and then he continues that and says ask knock seek this is another three big mystical words leading to a university of prayer school of prayer ask knock seek he says ask it will be given to you knock it will be open to you seek you shall find then he says again which who among you suppose your son asked for a bread will you give him a stone suppose your child ask for fish will you give a snake if you who are evil want know how to give good gift to your children how much more your heavenly father will give you holy spirit hallelujah so what i want to say this word words when we read we should not simply read and go ahead we have to stop cut the word three loaves of bread why he ask only three why don't he ask a basket what mean the three what mean the night what means the journey what so that when you pray then the holy spirit will reveal reveal and in that revelation we should also concur with the teaching of the church to the fathers of the church then it will be very very good understanding we should not blindly follow what we receive when the holy spirit revealed to us he would have already revealed to the leaders of the church okay so now this is the first way we have to use the gift now what is the first a revelation gift what are the three points in that word of wisdom word of knowledge and discernment of lips is it time for tea now hmm no ah okay 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 thank you now now we come to the so this is something every time particularly all the pre